Hello everyone! Welcome or welcome back to my channel, The Theoretical Doctor Audio Blogs. In this video, I will be sharing my experience regarding the first time I was required to hand in my first ever explanation letter as a house officer in the ONG department. The link to the article of this audio blog is available in the description below if you would prefer to read on it instead. Otherwise, let's begin. Perhaps I had been lucky. Perhaps I have been let off the hook multiple times, which I know is true, but I have made multiple mistakes. And if there is one thing I know, I am still not competent enough. But I take pride in the fact that I've tried and I'm still pushing for through this journey. My first ever explanation letter occurred while I was in the obstetric and gynecology posting. I forfeited my off day on that day and was called back to assist in maternity too as one house officer took emergency leave and there were lack of house officers on duty. The job scope of maternity 2 involves monitoring the fetal heart condition on the CTG, cardiotocograph, attending to any acute cases such as patients complaining of contraction pain or spontaneous rupture of membrane as ROM or in short their water broke. I was towards the end of my shift around 6 55 p.m. when a staff nurse informed me that there is a deceleration on the CTG monitoring. I attended step. To my surprise there were significant episodes of decelerations on the CTG and I proceeded to check the opening of her cervix. It was only 3 cm. The criteria was for the cervix to be at least 5 centimeters before calling labor ward to send the patient downstairs. I immediately took picture of the CTG monitoring, took the case note, and rushed downstairs to find any medical officer on call to present my case. However, there were no other medical officers present at that time except for the registrar who was writing her review. Considering that the patient's baby is in acute fetal distress, I explained to her that I had to present this case. Upon presenting my review, I was asked a few questions regarding her admission which I did not know and proceeded to flip the case note to answer her. She then commented on my lack of insight on the patient's case and inability to document my findings first before referring. I agree, I, I should have documented first. However, I have a tendency to act first before thinking. Thus, my first instinct was to run and inform Stat before digesting her antenatal issues and progress in the ward. I was saved from the continuation of her comment by another fellow medical officer, the very same one who was with me when I experienced a case of cord prolapse during my night shift in maternity 2. Upon reviewing the patient, the patient mentioned that her water broke around 4 p.m. Now, this was a real mistake on my part. At 4 p.m., the staff nurse informed me that this particular patient informed that her water broke to which I attended stat. Upon my assessment, there were no leaking like core, cough impulse was also negative, and her bed sheet was not wet. However, I did not document it down. Thus, when she was assessed by the medical officer, that was when her bro water broke. There was obvious flooding, and the medical officer proceeded to check for any entry at 4 p.m. She then called the registrar to inform regarding this case and told that initially at 4 p.m., the patient complained of leaking lycor, to which I claimed there wasn't, however, no documentation. I was then asked to hand in an explanation letter by 8 a.m. the following morning to which I did by that night. Documentation is extremely important because should a case be brought to court in the future, the documentation serves to save myself as the patient's case note serves as a legal document. Thus, if you are having trouble like me in terms of documenting prior to acting, I totally understand. However, just document first if you can. Thank you for listening to this audio blog. Do stay tuned for more which will be available every Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Remember to click on the subscribe button as well as the bell button so you won't miss out on any upcoming audio blogs.